Uh, okay, good morning or good afternoon. Um, today, what I'm going to be showing you is another uh, set of formulas, another set of calculations using Excel. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now and open Excel. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open a blank workbook. So here we go. So the first column, we're going to title age, column B, investment. Have to adjust that. Growth by year. And then we're going to cut and paste that. So I'm going to hold down. Go over, hit Control X. No, uh, I'm actually going to copy and paste, not cut and paste. So I taught you how to cut and paste before. Here to copy and paste, we center, center it, hold down our left mouse button, Control C. Put it right here, Control V. So there we go. So this one, we need to expand this column a little bit, expand this column a little bit. And let's bold all of this and increase the font size slightly. Need to do this. Okay, so today I'm gonna teach you something that I wish somebody had taught me when I was in school. And this is the idea of compound interest and how um, the earlier you start investing in life, the more money you will have um, in the later years of your life. It's, it's actually called in finance, it's called the snowball effect. Um, what we're gonna see here is investing toward the end um, really starts to, to pick up speed and you can really um, start to make a lot of money toward the end if you invest early enough. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a simulation of uh, what is called a Roth IRA. So what a Roth IRA is, what that means is that the government will allow you to invest up to $6,000 a year or roughly $500 a month tax-free. So what that means is when you get your paycheck from your job, once taxes have been taken out, this is what we would call after-tax money. So if you put $500 um, of your paycheck into this Roth IRA, once you reach the age of 65 and decide to withdraw from it, there are no taxes taken out on it at all. It grows tax-free. So you're never taxed each year on this investment and you're never taxed um, when you start to withdraw it at the age of 65. It is completely tax-free. It's your money. So whatever numbers we're coming up with are the numbers that you get to keep. So what I'm gonna do uh, here is I'm gonna show you a simulation. We're gonna start at the age of 18. We're gonna do a simulation starting at the age of 18. And what would happen if you started at the age of 40 and look at the differences. So in order to, uh, in order to not have to type 18 to 65, I'm just gonna enter this formula here equals the cell above me plus one. Now I can go ahead and drag down to the age of 65. Go. And then I'm gonna do the same thing right here if I start at 40, so equals the cell above me plus one. And let's drag that down to 65. Okay, so here's our investment. So uh, we're going to create a formula called, um, well, there, there's no name for it. Sorry about that. We're going to start with equals, right? So equals 6,000 
and we're going to increase that 6,000. So the, the 6,000 represents our yearly investment. So that $6,000, once it's invested in this Roth IRA, it's going to grow roughly at a rate of 8% per year. Now, now, where did I get this 8% number from? That is the average of the stock market over, I think it's the last 100 years. So pretty much, you know, there are up years, there are down years, but in general, um, over time, the average return of investments is about 8%. Now, this also takes into account inflation. And inflation is basically the idea that things cost more um, next year than they do this year. We call that inflation. So like if a loaf of bread is a dollar this year and next year it's a dollar 10, we would consider that 10% inflation, which is really high. Um, right now, our society is struggling with really high inflation. Uh, however, understand that some years inflation isn't as bad. So taking an average approach over many, many years, the average inflation in the United States is about 2%. So a loaf of bread, a dollar this year would be a dollar two next year. Usually, you know, you have less inflation some years, more inflation others, it all kind of balances out to about 2%. So if the stock market on average returns 10% per year, and inflation is 2% per year, then 10 minus two is eight. So your, your, your growth is about 8% per year. So we're going to go 6,000 and we're going to increase that by 8%. Now, if I had just put 8%, if I had just put 0 0.8, 0 0.08, it would have, it would have taken the 8% of 6,000, but we want to increase 6,000 by 8%. So I have to put that one there first. So I would, uh, in, in year one, I would have $480 worth of growth. Now we can't create a pattern yet because um, there's going to be some differences now to the formula. So we're gonna go equals, but this time we're gonna have to put this into parentheses because there's an order of operations here. And we, um, you know, from math class, you always have to do multiplication and division before you do addition and subtraction. So we're gonna open parentheses this cell here plus 6,000. So this is your original um, 6480 that you've earned the previous year. We're going to also invest another 6,000 of our own money. And that amount, so the previous year plus what I invest this year is going to grow by 8%. So that's my formula. The cell above me plus the 6,000. So at the end of year two, I would have 13,478. Continuing the pattern one more, then we can start to drag equals. I have to put it in parentheses because of order of operations. The year above me, all, all my previous two years growth, plus the 6,000 that I invest, and that's all gonna grow by 8%. Hit enter. Now at this point, we can drag down that formula to the age of 65. And I'm going to make this money. It's just a number, but if I click on this dollar sign, it changes it to dollars. So let's make sure that we've uh, done our formulations right. Um, so let's look right here. Yep, the cell above plus six, the 6,000 times the one point, uh, times the 8% growth. So you would see if you started at the age of 18, by the time you're 65, you would have 3,176,056.42. Um, following typical investment um, returns. That's in today's money. So you might say, yeah, but what about inflation? Well, we've, we've already accounted for inflation. What about, do I have to pay tax on this? No, this is $3 million 
in today's money that you would have at the age of 65. 3,176. Um, what if you just uh, saved your money? Well, let's see what would happen if we just saved our money. Put it in a, put it into our, under our mattress or something like that. No interest bearing. Let's see what we get. Right. Uh, yeah, there we go. We'd only have two hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars if we just took that. If we didn't invest it, we just took that money and put it under our pillow. Six thousand dollars a year would only yield us two hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars if we didn't invest it. So definitely worth it to put that money into investment. Um, don't put it into a savings account at the bank. That's only like one percent interest. Doesn't even keep up with inflation. Now let's look at our growth by year. So there's no growth this year, right? Because it's the first year. Now we're going to take, if we take this cell minus this cell, that would represent our growth. Same thing here. We take year three growth minus year two growth. So you'll notice it's growing more each year. This is what we call the snowball effect. By the end, I want you to look at the massive leaps it's taking here, starting right here, how fast it begins to grow as you get more towards 65. By that 65th year, your growth is $241,000 a year. So imagine if you waited until 70, to uh, take this money. We waited till 70, one, two, three, four, five. We'd have almost 5 million in today's money tax-free if we waited until 70. So something to think about. Um, let's look at, uh, um, well, first let's chart this. First, let's, let's create a line graph. So I'm going to take my uh, investment, take my investment, and I'm going to insert a line graph. And I'm going to go with this one right here. And we're going to call this Roth IRA at 8% growth. Starting at 18. Come on. Probably just move up like that and then move it. Yeah. So there's your IRA growth. What happens if you start at the age of 40? Can you get that same snowball effect or is it really, really important to start young? Well, so we start in our first year, we, we uh, invest our $6,000. That's going to grow at a rate of a rate of 8%. That following year, we're going to have that original investment. We're going to add an additional 6000 to it of our own money. And that's going to grow at 8%. Then the following year, we, we have our original two years of growth. We're going to add to that our $6,000 or our $500 a month. That's going to grow at 8%. So let's see what happens. I 
and uh, we'll make these dollar. Um, sorry, let's just do that. So this will be this. This will be the growth will be this minus this. The growth will be this minus this. Now we can go ahead and now that we've established the pattern, we can go ahead and drag down. 44, 378, 12. I could have just taken the first years of this one, but I just wanted to, to do it again to, to kind of give you practice with it. You'd only have 518,104 if you started at 40 by the time you turn 65. I mean, $518,000 tax-free is nothing to sneeze at, but it's nothing like starting young. Um, so let's, let's chart that real quick. Um, so we're going to take our data and we are going to insert our line, line graph and uh, let's title this um, Roth IRA at 8% growth. Starting at 40. Okay, let me show you another way to figure this out without it being itemized by year. Um, one of the activities I'm going to have you guys do is, is create this um, doing a, a, a by year showing the, the amount you'd have each year and the growth each year. But let me show you if you just want to do a, a, a quicker estimation. This is what we would call the future value. Um, the future value function. So what we would say is we would say equals FV for future value. And we would open our parentheses. So what's our growth rate? Well, our rate is 8% growth. And then notice how we have to put commas between each of our um, each of our items. So the number of periods, well, the number of periods would be years. So let's just real quick do a, a quick calculation. 65 minus 18 would be 47 years of investing. So the number of periods would be 47, comma. What's our payment? In other words, how much are we putting in each year? So we would be putting in $6,000. Now I made it a negative because that's money that we're losing, right? So um, we want the answer that it gives us to be positive. So we have to make our 6,000 negative because we're, we're giving away that $6,000. The present value, how much do I have starting out with? Well, I have zero starting out with. We're starting this calculation from zero. Now, if, if I had $30,000 that I wanted to start with right now, and then grow from that point, I would put that here under present value. But since the assumption is a person at 18 is starting with zero, we're gonna, we're gonna have it um, do it that way. And then finally, is the interest going to be added at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year? Um, let's just go with the default zero for the end of the year and let's see what it feeds back to us. Okay, so there, there is the future value of that. So you'll notice there's a slight difference between this number and this number, mostly because of that last thing that we did, whether it's the beginning of the period or the end of the period. Um, but anyway, that gives you a general idea. That's what we call the future value. So notice my calculation equals FV, 8% growth for 47 years. We're paying into the system $6,000 per year. We're not starting with anything, and the interest compounds at the end of each period. Now let me show you another function called the present value function. No, I'm sorry, the, the payment function. 
So basically the way the payment function works is I want to have a million dollars tax-free by the time I'm 65. How much would I need to invest? Well, I would have 15 years. So let's see what I'd have to put in. Equals PMT for payment. My rate, I'm going to assume 8% per year. That's the 10% growth in the, in the stock market minus 2% for inflation. So I'm going to put 0.08. The number of periods is 15 years to do it in. My, pr uh, my present value is zero. My future value, I want a million dollars in 15 years. Sorry, this is supposed to be 8% growth. My future value, I want a million dollars. So a million is six zeros. And the type is the end of the period. So I would need to put in $36,829.54 per year, which would work out to divide that by 12, and that would give me per month. Three, I'd have to put in about $3,000 a month into investments to have a million dollars by the time I'm 65. So we call that the payment feature. Notice that um, I, so here, here was my interest rate. Here was my number of years, what I was starting with, how much I'm, I'm wanting in that amount of time, and then it's compounding at the end of the year. The last function that I want to teach you is the um, present value function. So this kind of answers the question, would you rather have $10 now or $100 in 10 years? That's the question. Would you rather have $10 now or $100 in 10 years? So let's find out using what's called the present value function. So present value, our interest rate is 8%. The number of periods is 10 years. Payment is zero. We're not, we're not putting in any monthly payment. We're just finding out if we'd rather have $10 now or $100 in 10 years. The future value is $100. And the type is zero. So $100 in 10 years is worth $46.32 now. So basically what that's saying is, would you rather have $10 now or $46.32 now? So some of you would say you'd rather have, rather have the $10 now than $100 in 10 years. However, you should know that that $100 in 10 years is worth $46.32 right now. That's its present value. So it basically goes in reverse. And, and set, if, if I were to say 46.32 times 8% growth for 10 years, in 10 years, I'd have $100. So that's the whole idea behind that. So um, I'll be uploading um, an activity to Schoology that you can practice some of this stuff. And um, hopefully this video uh, proves helpful. So um, anyway, hope everybody has a great day.